What is up guys? Rick Kak is here. Thank you so much for joining me and today we are going to be running the brand new exotic linear fusion rifle, the Arbalist, just added into Destiny 2 with the current event, the Revelry, through the largest raid in Destiny's history, the Last Wish. All six fire team members have this weapon and we are testing it in every single encounter. You're gonna want to see this because the meta is shifting. Alright guys, now let's get started by taking a look at this exotic weapon. Firstly, it has the intrinsic perk Compounding Force. Fire slugs that cause massive damage to elemental shields of enemy combatants. This is important because it's a kinetic weapon and they usually can't do that. Then we've got another pretty unique perk here, Disruption Break. Breaking an enemy shield with this weapon makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. So it does more damage against shields, which is, makes it easier to break them, and then it's going to do more damage itself. That's the wombo combo. Now, moving on from there, we're going to have the first encounter of the Last Wish raid against Kali. And Kali can be a bit tricky. She can definitely absorb quite a lot of damage before going down, and also it can be hard to hit her with a precision weapon like the Arbalist because she does recoil around. You obviously are trying to go for those headshots, but she moves her head around so much and it's a pretty small target. But we went into the damage phase, and as you can see, this thing is actually insane. It outputs a considerable amount of damage, and we were able to one phase or one traditional phase kill Kali, and this was a disaster of a phase. First off, we had a super late melting point because the guy accidentally melting pointed a knight. Then you're going to see mid damage phase, myself and other teammates go out to get special ammo because the Arbalist does not have a ton of reserve ammunition, even with armor pieces increasing that for linear fusion rifles. And thirdly, you're going to see a teammate stand there and die because his controller ran out of batteries. All of that stuff happened and we still one-phased her. That shows the power of this weapon. You're doing like 130,000 damage for a headshot with melting point up, and you're capable of doing even more depending on uh, your Lodo and your Riven's Bane stuff and all of that stuff. So holy crap, this thing outputs damage. So, as for my rating for this encounter, I mean, it does exactly what you want it to do. It outputs a ton of damage at one phase there, 9 out of 10. Moving on from there, the next encounter is against Shiro Chi. So, we had our team bust into this encounter, we deactivate her shield, put down the well of her- Oh, she's already dead. <laughs> wait, wait a second, wait a second, Shiro Chi's already dead. I, I got to shoot her like twice, maybe three times. She was melted. Guys, the damage from this weapon is on par with something like the Legend of Acreus exotic power shotgun. Seriously, this damage is comparable to power weapons. And it's a kinetic weapon that uses special ammo. That is absurd. Like, we are seriously melting Shiro Chi as fast as the pre-nerf escalation shotgun. It's truly insane. And you can, with this weapon, damage her from further away if you like that strategy better. It's, it's pretty niche, but still, dang, this thing outputs damage. Now, of course, the Shiro Chi encounter does have a lot of other things going on. You're activating plates, you're entering commands, and there's just a lot of adds. Now, against those adds, I mean, you do actually have a weapon that can just one-shot headshot kill the knights, which is very, very good. But for the most part, that's not as efficient as something else per se. And of course, you do have to hit your headshots where something like the Legend of Acreus, it's so easy to just melt an ogre, an Eye of Riven, or a knight if you need to use that weapon there. But for the most part, you're not actually relying on your weapons when you're just mowing through adds, you're using supers. So having supers for the adds, and then having... You know, honestly, a power weapon like a rocket launcher or something like that, or a machine gun even, for those ads, and then using this just for damaging Shiro Chi is, is extremely relevant, is very good, and therefore, another 9 out of 10. Like, this thing is ripping through the Last Wish raid. 
Alright, but moving on from there, we have Morgoth, or Swolgoroth. Now, this guy is our first kind of really big DPS check, whereas before, I mean, it overcame Kali, it definitely killed Shirochi, but Shirochi is smaller chunks of health, Kali, we did have to utilize going into the protection rooms and come out, so it did take the entirety, pretty much, of that first damage phase. Morgoth doesn't give you that luxury. It's do or die. You either damage him in the back as much as you can because we are doing the melting strat. Come on. <laughs> what do you think this is? We're definitely going to try to kill him in one single phase. And if you fail, there's no going into a room to hide. You just die. So can this weapon go up there with the ranks of the pre-nerf Thunderlord, the Escalation Shotgun, the Legend of Arceus? Can it do it? Well, as you can see, Holy crap, it absolutely can. You are capable of doing nearly 60,000 damage per shot with Melting Point in the Well of Radiance, and you are shooting so fast. That's like really the power of this weapon, is that the charge time is very small. You're capable of outputting all those five rounds, or I guess infinite rounds, because obviously we're, we're using Luna Faction Boots, but you're capable of shooting really, really fast, way faster, I would say, than a lot of other weapons out there. And, I mean, Morgoth was only at 60%. That when we killed him, 60%, that's it. And, like, jeez. I mean, you get up to, like, 80% sometimes with some of these other weapon uh, melts. So, uh, another 9 out of 10. Like, what is this gun? This is insane. In any event, it is time to move on. And our next encounter is actually pretty different because it doesn't feature a boss fight. It's the Vault. And here, you're really utilizing a powerful weapon like this to just kill adds normally, definitely to kill the Eye of Rivens potentially, but also and mainly to kill the knights that come out and try to kill your entire team and make you wipe. And against those knights, as you can see, the Arbalest is pretty darn fantastic. It's, you know, it's not one-shotting them, two-shotting them, anything like that, but it's capable of doing enough damage to stun lock them, and then you can have easy follow-up shots, and a couple people with Arbalest, or frankly just you with an Arbalest by yourself, can take down a knight very easily if you're hitting your shots. And also, funny enough, because you're using this weapon, and it's finally not a power weapon, you can actually justify using a sword. Like, the swords are super niche. I never run swords in raids, but swords are actually exactly what you want for this encounter. They absolutely destroy the knights. So you can get a couple of arbalist shots, finish off knights with your sword super, super easily. Not to mention that finally the bonus damage against shields actually comes up because you're able to almost one-shot kill the Eyes of Riven. They do, of course, have a solar shield. And it's going to one-shot kill pretty much anything else you want it to. Oh, there's a phalanx running towards you. Boom, he's dead. Oh, there's anything else pretty much. Boom, he's dead. So in this encounter, the Arbalist's power combined with the fact that it's not a power weapon and still lets you use something very useful in that slot means it's a great option for this as well. Now, it isn't as insane as it's been in the other uh, encounters, and so I'm going to give it here in the vault an 8 out of 10, still absolutely above average and still excellent. All right, and next up, we have the big one, the DPS phase against Riven. Obviously, we're checking damage. We're gonna be trying to do the cheese. Can the Arbalist one phase Riven within the cheese? It's certainly been very impressive so far. Well, let's check it out. And as you can see, I mean, for goodness sakes, it's doing over 100K per shot, but, Turns out, not actually enough to take down Riven in that one damage phase. Looking at the damage numbers here, we're pretty much all capable of doing over a million damage. A million five hundred, actually, which is putting the Arbalest in the upper echelon of guns out there. That's pretty good. We got Riven down to half health. So, normally I would say, look, you want to just have a gun that does a lot of damage against Riven, why would you use this when you could just use a rock launcher with cluster bombs? Like, there's no reason to use this over that. But here's the thing. This is the basically one time where I'm not saying that about a power weapon. I'm saying that about a kinetic weapon. So you can use this weapon 
and just also be using rockets with cluster bombs as a legendary. So, I mean, that's exactly what we did. Use all your rockets and then switch to the Arbalest and it's still fantastic. You don't have to take this weapon off. Now, of course, you could absolutely and easily kill Riven if you were to do this legit. I mean, doing half her health in just that short amount of time shows how powerful this weapon is. But, ain't nobody's got time for that. And, uh, again, you can use it in conjunction with the absolute most damaging option, which is rock launchers with Cluster Bomb. So, overall, in this encounter, a 7 out of 10. But now we have the final encounter, which is running the heart of Riven to the end, completing the raid. Here, the Arbalest, although it's actually not too bad, especially in that first encounter, you do have a lot of enemies with shields. You can just one-shot kill all their shields. But frankly, you're not really using a power weapon or any weapon per se for this a part of the encounter. You are definitely better off just using your supers. Now, it can come up in slightly later rounds. There is some parts during that run where you are wanting to kill enemies, especially phalanxes at long range, and so you can just one-hit snipe them with the Arbalest. So it's pretty good there. Now, if you get teleported into the nether realm uh you can use the arbalist to kill the knights reasonably fast there's a lot of stuff going on though and so lining up headshots again and again and again isn't actually the most practical thing probably again a super is going to be better so here the arbalist is definitely kind of i would say lacking just the nature of this encounter the arbalist isn't exactly what you want to be using but with that being said it's definitely not slacking and so here again, I would give the Arbalest a 7 out of 10. Still absolutely above average, but you're probably better off with slightly different options in this specific encounter. And here is where we complete the re- Wait, oh, we got guitared. It's uh, April 2019, and we're still getting guitared. That's where we're going to end the video today. Guys, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Absolutely, the Arbalest uh, overall was fantastic. I got to say, throughout this entire raid, really surprised me just how much damage this was capable of outputting and just how fast. This is absolutely uh, an option to run through the last wish. In fact, this is a really good option because it's not a power weapon. The fact that you can still use a rocket with cluster bombs to make up for any damage that you don't get with this weapon is truly insane. Overall, I'm going to give this thing an 8 out of 10 in The Last Wish. Absolutely above average, and I would highly recommend not only getting this weapon, but running it through raids. Guys, again, that's it for the video. If you want to see more Destiny 2 content, be sure to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.